What's up? This is Jeremy Griff coming at you again with another video today to have a little quick talk on mass incarceration. I watched the Joe Rogan podcast today, which I do often. I love that show. I'm a big fan of that show. Constantly keeping my eye on it and everything that Joe enlightens me on. And uh, Joe, you're doing a great job, man. I'm very proud of the show that you put forth. You put a lot of energy into it and it entertains a lot of people. And uh, I just want to personally thank you for that. Gets me through the day. But anyways, the topic that I want to talk to you today about is mass incarceration. And it's a very big, very big topic politically right now. I don't know if you all know it, but it's, it's pretty much Hillary Clinton's main platform. It's what she runs on, basically. She's very known for supporting mass incarceration. The talks that she gives to corporations sometimes would involve this situation and her belief style. If you look at the statistics of what she supported in the past, mass incarceration is one of those things that she supported heavily. And um, I'm totally against mass incarceration. Uh, I really don't agree with that topic at all. I think it's the new form of modern slavery. Joe Rogan got into that a bit on his podcast today. He had a great guest named um, Carlos, no, George, George Perez, episode, one fi episode 850 with George Perez, which is a great insight into... You know, this guy was in prison for three years, he understands the program, he understands how it's run, and he came through it as a positive person and, and is living a positive life now, thank God. But at the time, he was going through mass incarceration, or he was going through the mass incarceration system. He was going through incarceration. And um, it gives you a good perspective on, on what it's like to be an inmate. You know, it is the new form of modern slavery, like I was saying. This is an interesting statistic. Not only does the, the, the prison system or whatever institution is housing these individuals, they get like $85,000 a year from the government in certain states to house these individuals. Now that's a grip of money, bro. That's, that's five times more money than I get on Social Security, <laughs> which is amazing. Because I live a decent, uh, a decent life on Social Security. But anyways, um, not only do they make that money, not only does the institution make that money for housing those individuals, but they also use those individuals in a form of slave, slave labor. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a United States sanctioned, if you will, type of, of, uh, of, of mass slavery, of industrial slavery. Because they pay these guys like... 13 cents an hour, 20 cents an hour for jobs that are absolutely amazing. And they started out by doing, by getting these guys to, to um, build things that they knew they would have to use in other prisons. Like one of the main things that they started prison systems with was, or they still do now, is um, making blue jeans. Like their, their denim outfits, their, their dress uniform that they have to wear in prison. Every, uh, every institution usually has a dress code, and uh, most convicts wear these blue jeans. They're like a super, dupe, super deep blue, and, um, and they're blue shirts. It's like a blue work shirt. They also uh, they used to do license plates. Everybody knows that. They see that in the movies. America knew that license plates was something that Americans would always have to have because... The car population is growing as, as steadily and as fast as the human population, practically. So they knew that those, those, those cars would have to be tagged and identified. So every one of them needs a license plate. There's big money in that. And they're using, um, they're using people to do these things. There's institutions that build furniture. And they, they, not only do they make an extraordinary amount of money for housing these prisoners, these individuals from the government, but they also work these individuals for nothing. 
and build a, build items that us as consumers go out and 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 work our lives away to try to attain. You know, that beautiful couch that you just purchased might have been made in a prison. <laughs> So yeah, things like that are interesting. There's also a prison that's that's um, they were talking about on the program, raising and and training horses. You know, that's that's a, that's incredible. And the institution, you know, mass incarceration used to be about reform and uh, giving these these convicts or these inmates some kind of skill, some kind of guidance, some kind of learning. That's why prisons were instituted in the first place because we wanted to recondition these individuals morally so that they could understand how to be a man and conduct themselves positively. And lately, you know, when you actually look at it now because we have digital media and the internet, we can actually look into the situation and see how people are orchestrating and running this program, this system, you know, of prisons, of mass incarceration. And, and so many of them are abusing the situation now. Corporations, if you have enough money, you can buy a prison and basically have endless staff at immensely low rates in paying, paying them for their work. Not only that, but the government's going to pay you as well for taking care of them. So, but it's important that we teach them a trade you know, I think that that's, that's very important. There needs to be more reform in general. The system is screwed up in so many ways, but I'm still pro-system. I've never been anti-system. You know, without the system, we have anarchy. And what do we have when we have anarchy? I'll tell you what we have. We have the dark ages. Nobody remembers those days. Nobody wants to think back to those days that you'd get killed for your chicken. You know? We don't want that. I'm going to this, uh, this, this free concert tonight at uh, Fresno City College called uh, Schools Not Prisons. You can look them up at schoolsnotprisons.org. And uh, hopefully it's pretty good. Anybody who's trying to get the word out about what's actually going on, we got to get out there and support these people as much as possible. Try to, try to link up with like-minded individuals so that they can understand what's going on so that we can spread the word on what's going on. And, you know, if people don't keep an eye on what's going on, that's why shit's been allowed to get as far as it has now. That's why people are allowed to abuse the system, because uh, nobody's keeping an eye on them. And that's all going to change. You know, the change starts as an individual. Start saying, you know, stop looking for an organization to keep an eye on people and things like that. Start keeping an eye on yourself. And if, it, if you're really offended by what's happening, then make a difference. You know, do something. Let your voice be known. Damn sure at least know about it so that you can speak on it with like-minded individuals because somebody eventually will do something. And that's the important key. That's a major key. Yeah, they get 85000 a year to take care and house these individuals. That's crazy. Do you know corporations like in China? Uh, corporations do that. Corporations will take care of, of a person. You know, like say a young man wants to work in a Nike factory and it's a sweatshop in China. And he's only 12 years old, 11 years old. Well, China basically adopts him. The society adopts him. The Nike Corporation adopts him. He makes shoes for 12 hours a day. They make sure they provide his meals and things like that. He even gets a, a living, a living um, cubicle, if you will, like a very small apartment. Almost, you know, in, in America, we're very spoiled. We have studios. In, in Asia, man, these people got cubicles. And that's where they live. You know, but that kid's happy to be taken care of. But yeah, they're doing the same thing. It's mass slavery in, uh, in, in China and other republics as well, or in, on other continents, but they're doing it in different ways. Here in America, they're doing it through the prison system, through mass incarceration. And slavery has been always going on. Slavery will always go on. You know, work, if you stop and think about work and the way that they've or orchestrated the system and created money, that is, in itself, slavery. Because they also pump all these desires into your mind. Every time I'm watching TV, they got a new iPhone coming out. Or they got, you know, I was just telling my friend the other night, my 30-inch TV isn't, isn't good anymore because the new 50-inch is HD. You know? <laughs> so that's the way things work, man. 
uh, a man's desires dictate how much of himself he's going to have to give up or how much of his life he's going to have to give up to attain those desires. And that's slavery. You know, That's the way they worked it into the system. Get that money. Uh, my brother was incarcerated. You know, this is a funny topic, actually. And one of the reasons why I'm so dead set against mass incarceration, because I'm a victim of that. You know, my brother is a victim of that. And because he's a victim, I'm a victim because I emotionally care for him. You know, I pray for his safety and his guidance. It's funny, actually. When he was, you know, my brother got incarcerated for murder. And uh, I love him dearly. I understand where he was in his life. He was confused. He was young. He was immature. And he didn't understand what was going on. But he's going to come out a better man. I honestly believe that. And I pray for that daily. God bless and protect him. But, um, yeah, I was, I was for the death penalty. You know, I used to be for the death penalty, honestly. Because it's an answer to mass incarceration. But... I immediately, I thought about it today, actually. I'm against it. I'm against it. Because when my brother went up for murder, I didn't want him to die. You know? I understood the situation and the facts revolving around why he had to do what he had to do. I'm sure his family, though, I'm sure the, the, the family of the person he murdered some of them probably wish they could have seek the death penalty. You know, I understand forgiveness, though, and I hope I hope everybody comes to terms with things that they go through and try to understand forgiveness to the most of their ability, because that's going to make them a great man as well. Um, but yeah, mass incarceration, mass population slavery, it's a deep and interesting topic and something that deserves more attention. So you guys need to look up and look at, look that up and study that, research that, and uh, hopefully it, it educates you a little bit on what you need to get into and what you need to what you need to take notice of in the world. Once again, this has been Jeremy Griff coming at you with another truth talk. Let me light up a cigarette for the end of the video for my smoking fanatics, the people who who quit and just are dying for a hit. live vicariously through me. I don't worry too much about the smoking because I worry more about my moral standing and taking care of my, my priorities. We're all going to die. I've come to terms with death years and years ago, you know. It's more important to be happy and accomplish the things that you need to accomplish while you're here. You might have more time to shine if you don't indulge in the things that keep you happy, but what good is life if you're not happy? This has been Jeremy Griff. I hope you all have a great day. God bless and protect you, keep you in all your ways. God bless and protect my brother, my family, and those that I love. And uh, I'll probably see some of you tonight at Fresno City. Have a good night.